Estamos en Bogotá. <laughs> what do you think about Bogotá until the moment? You like it? Well, I'm local. I'm from Bogotá, and I'm so excited. And it's an honor to have you all. You to have all you guys in in my city. This is like a dream for us. So uh, we're very thankful with the Ethereum Foundation because uh, there was a a lot of effort. I know the the work that they did for 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 having all of us together here. And it's an honor also to be here uh, today with these amazing leaders that uh, we, are, we are going to discuss uh, about what they are building and to learn how, uh, and th this is the name of the panel, we don't have it right now, but uh, web uh, by the way, my name is Mauricio Tovar from Tropicus, Colombian guy. And uh, we, the, the name of the panel is um, Web3, it's uh, going great. And I want to start asking that. Is Web3 going well? And I'm going to introduce uh, our amazing panelist, Brian from Zero S Park Foundation. Uh, Eda from Build Guild. Uh, Jacob from ETH Global. Amazing weekend we had here in, in Bogota. And Romina, Crypto Chica, from ETH Latam. Uh, let's start with that question, guys, if, if, you, if you agree. Romina, do you want to start? Do you have a, a microphone? Okay. We, we need to share. I can share it with you. Uh, so you have Ida. Start, is, we can start with you, Ida. Um, yeah, for sure. So um, it's a hard question to start with. Um, <laughs> I'm sad that I came last to answer it first. Uh, but basically, yeah, I think it's... Well, there's a lot of improvements to do, but even like when I look one year back to where it was, um, I think there's been a lot of improvements. And um, yeah, I'm just very glad to have entered the ecosystem. And I think there's, again, a lot of improvements to do, but it's, yeah, there's like mini steps, which are kind of incremental increases. Nice. Romina, what do you think? Um, I think that Web3 is well right now in all Latin because I'm from Argentina, well, a lot of people who are there knows me, and there's people from Honduras, Ecuador, Mexico, uh, and a lot of people from, from different countries from LATAM. And we, I think that Web3 in the present is, is a good tool for us to uh, have an alternative for the different, for the traditional system. Uh, between, uh, I mean, the the governments, the bank system, we we really use crypto and blockchain to in our day in la cotidianeidad. <laughs> in the in a daily in a daily basis. Yeah, just use, yeah. if you wanna send value or send money to your friend or family or whatever. So I think that we 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 are not thinking in the future. We are thinking in the present. Um, it's a different approach. Yeah. What do you think, Jake? Yeah, I think it's an interesting question. Um, I think there's also a satirical Twitter account called Web3 is going great, which posts about all the hacks that happen I all didn't the time. Know that. So, um, so, I mean, it depends on how you look at that sentence. Um, I think, like, overall, like, having seen uh, the last kind of five years of, of ETH Global Hackathons and also just, like, in general watching the ecosystem, I think, like, a really good signal is just a lot of really smart people have kind of come to the space and stayed. Um, it's, like, a really kind of interesting environment where uh, it is the frontier in a lot of ways, and I think we don't really quite know exactly what we're doing. Um, but that's actually, like, a really exciting opportunity for smart people to come in and, like, think about these problems, think about how they can serve, you know, underserved communities, how they can kind of serve, like, um, with these new um, kind of primitives that we've been building in Web3. Um, so I, I think, like, just overall, like, seeing kind of the, the community grow um, significantly and, and having smart people stay and, and, and continue building um, is at least a, a really positive, great sign. So I think uh, from that aspect, Web3 has been going great, and I think there's a lot of other aspects in which it is. Right. Brian. Yeah, um, I think there are a couple of different dimensions along which we can try to answer this question. Um, first off, I think that, you know, to echo what the other uh, folks on the panel have mentioned, there are a lot of things that 
we should be very proud of. I think there's a lot of really promising seeds around community. Uh, I'm really excited just to see, you know, with DevCon being in, in Bogota and just looking at how much global activity there is worldwide around Ethereum development. I think that's, you know, so, so promising to see. At the same time, I think it's important that we're continually taking a very, like, critical uh, perspective on what can we doing better, what can we be doing better, what value have we really created so far, right? Like, at the end of the day, this is technology that has to impact end users, and I think that's been one of the challenges, you know, for uh, Web3 for, you know, a long time. I mean, it's really fantastic to see that payments uh, actually have taken off and are serving so many uh, financially underserved people. You know, when our crew from Xerox Park came out here to Bogota, I've been super surprised by how many of our you know, transactions actually involve people requesting us to send cryptocurrency. That's like a really encouraging sign. At the same time, when we look at like various industries, for example, crypto gaming, I would wager that there's like, despite all the speculative hype around that, there are fewer than 10,000 people in the world who have probably had a fun time playing a crypto game. Um, and for the size of that industry, the industry, that's actually something that we need to be really critical of and that we should be continually raising the bar and, and challenging ourselves on. So I think that there's a lot of promising seeds, but you know, like um, sorry, Ida said, there's a lot to think about improving on. Okay, um, I want to talk out later about the Latin American and real users. Uh, but first of all, I want to, um, for, for the audience to understand what are your, product, your projects, uh, what are the problems that you are trying to solve, and uh, what kind of impact does your team hope to leave on the web free ecosystem and the world in general? Uh, maybe we can start with you. Right. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, my answer to this is going to be a little bit perhaps hypocritical, given <laughs> what I just said about the importance of, of um, connecting to end users. But, but I, I do think that there is actually really a uh, very deep and important connection. So the Xerox Park Foundation focuses on what we call application level research and development. And that basically means trying to understand what are the technologies today that enable use cases, perhaps two to five years out, thinking beyond things like, you know, I know in the last couple of years, there's been this massive bull run and all this ap activity on the application level. But a lot of it looks like you know, quite incremental improvements. Things like, oh, you know, let's build another DeFi app that's at like the sixth level of financial engineering, or let's build, you know, and, and accessibility is very important, but once you get to like, here's the nth wallet application with like a marginally better mobile UX or something. Uh, how do we encourage the space to think bigger about like how might things like zero knowledge proofs or things coming out of, you know, cryptography, uh, academic literature impact the ways that we think about privacy and, and you know digital transactions online um, so that's mostly what we focus on uh, and you know we're just hoping to start planting the seeds for impactful technologies that that might reach those end users two to five years down the line right, Jacob yeah sure um, yeah so I, I work with ETH global um, what ETH global does is, is primarily kind of grow the ethereum developer ecosystem uh, by bringing in web 2 developers meeting them where they are, helping them with education uh, through the hackathons that we run, like ETH Bogota this past weekend, um, and then ultimately kind of helping them through that journey. Um, if you think about it, joining Web3 is always like a very kind of stressful situation. There's a lot of stuff that's happening, lots of noise. Um, ETH Global kind of tries to be the signal. Um, and then the other thing that's really important about us, and, and of course the second part of our name, Global, um, is that there are talented people all around the world, whether Latin, India, um, North America, Europe, whatever. Um, there's just like tons of talent in the world and not everybody has the same opportunities to kind of travel the world or go to the right institutions or, or whatever. Um, so what ETH Global also tries to do is bring our events, our community, the Ethereum community in general, um, to these places all around the world um, and help kind of, kind of bolster their local communities as much as possible uh, through our hackathons and our events. So that's what we've been up to for the last five years. Um, ETH LATAM was created this year um, so we are so young, <laughs> it's a, a young project and I think that it was created with the vision of the road to DevCon. So uh, I think that we have a lot of community in LATAM, I don't know, Chile, Peru, uh, as I say, Honduras, Ecuador, Argentina, all the countries has leaders, um, has uh, communities so we try to um, improve 
the connections between the countries and the communities. And the first step was create ITLAT and Buenos Aires to, to have a big event. Argentina has a strong community with builders on Ethereum, but we never... We have never uh, been... We have never been uh, a, an event a big event. We, we uh, have never had uh, an event. Yeah, the, I had problems with this tense. <laughs> but well, we had uh, it global in 2018, but we had a big pause, a big, a big um, so many years without nothing, just small events. And now, now well, yes, uh, the, on Mondays we had it Latam Bogota. And it was a point of uh, meeting, un punto de encuentro, for all the leaders. And we have to create a, our identity. Uh, it Latin is growing, is uh, is evolving. So we don't have the we don't have the the, the, the objectives or the goals we are creating because we. Como nunca nos habíamos comunicado. <laughs> Uh, we have never been in touch together between the communities? Or? Yeah, I think that we, we, we were in our countries with our ideas, with our context, but this is the first time that we are talking between us and it's amazing. In person? In person? Yeah, in person, and we now we are uh, we, we are working like it Latin with all the Lat Latino Americanos and Latino Americanas, and we are trying to um, find what are our problems, how to solve it. Uh, it's a hard working, a hard work, but we are walking to the to the goals. <laughs> Amazing. They, they are doing an amazing job between the communities, I have to say that. Ida. Yeah, uh, so I'm part of Build Guild or Biddle Guild. Um, basically, what we are is we're a Web3 developer community. Um, we think a lot about onboarding developers and providing the right tool set to them, like giving them opportunity to learn and prototype, uh, as well as like while doing this also earn some income at the same time. Uh, we also have our hackathon starter kit, Scaffold ETH as well. Uh, so we maintain that, we create like different prototypes, and it's a way for developers to kind of start experimenting without moving full time. And you know, it's kind of a way where, you know, you can graduate to either building your own product or also go work at a Web3 community as a developer. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we're up to. Great. Well, one thing that um, is different from Web2 is that Web3 uh, have a very important uh, actor in, the, in, in, in your project is the community, right? What is the role of, of your community in the decision making of what you do and how you listen to them and what they, they want? Uh, let's start with you this time. You have the microphone, yeah? Yeah, uh, yeah for sure. So I think um, actually a big part of ETH Global's journey over the last little while has been kind of realizing actually exactly this, that community is center to what we do. Um, and actually thinking about actually ETH Global, the company is more of kind of a, a, a project that helps service that existing community that we've been able to build. Um, so yeah, from that perspective, we're certainly thinking a lot about um, different things in which we can do to help support them. So we actually just kind of publicly announced this past weekend at ETH Bogota a couple of new ways we're thinking about doing that. Uh, so we've been doing hackathons, obviously, over the last few years. Um, but now we've also launched uh, guides, which are kind of self-serve education platform. Um, kind of think of that as like kind of maybe the minus one to zero the hackathons then being the zero to one. And then we also want to help people on their journey from kind of going from Web2, building in Web3 for the first time, and then joining a Web3 company with jobs. Uh, so we just announced jobs as well. So uh, this is all kind of based on feedback that we've learned from our community and just sort of what we've seen over the last few years that um, you know we've been able to see kind of a lot of awesome people come through our doors, stay, a lot of them are actually in the audience, so hi everybody. Um, and, uh, and, and then yeah, actually kind of come into the community and either build something great and kind of have that be part of the community and their way of kind of impacting it, um, or joining an existing project in the space and, and taking it from there. So uh, we're just trying to support people within our community now within you know, more different ways than just the hackathons that we've been doing traditionally. And in your case, Heather? Um, yeah, so basically what we try to do a lot is, um, so we don't, yeah, like I think it's nice for developers because we don't provide them like a specific, you don't have to do 
X project, but you have the flexibility to kind of choose what you're interested in and kind of build that. So let's say, you know, you're interested in uh, integrating with Lens Protocol, you can do that. You can have different alternatives in that sense. And you can kind of, yeah, it's a very free community in the terms that, you know, every developer is welcome to build whatever they're interested in and kind of earn money for their contributions into the community. Uh, and all the, pro all the resources we provide are completely free and accessible, all online. We also like, it's a, yeah, it's a public good for the ecosystem that we don't like take anything from the developers contributing or, um, yeah, it kind of just, you can meet other people, you can network with other people, create different projects together. So yeah, I think it's a very core developer centric community in that. I'm going to introduce you in a moment. <laughs> I need to find the info. And um, until that, please, uh, your, your, the role of your community and how you listen to them. Yeah, I, I think that something really powerful happens when you approach uh, R&D or development from uh, a bottom-up rather than a top-down kind of perspective. Um, I think that there's, you know, one world where you can imagine a lot of the research being done in the space uh, being instigated by, like, monolithic organizations that have top-down research agendas, which they hire researchers for and then, you know, manage them to hit specific research outcomes. And I think that this early on in a technology's life cycle, you know, a, a technology so early and promising as Ethereum, we can't predict. No single person can predict what the most interesting directions are going to be. Um, and so we rely very heavily on our community and, you know, we frame ourselves as largely in service to a community of people who are really owning their own visions. So what we try to do is we try to educate folks. Um, I think there's a lot of similarities here, for example, with, with ETH Global, but we take people in, we try to educate them in a lot of these uh, new tools. Um, and then we have some general areas that we think are interesting to explore. For example, like zero knowledge, machine learning or something like that. And let's take a machine learning specialist uh, teach them how zero knowledge works and then leave it to them to start to articulate like a research agenda or vision for that subdomain. Uh, and then our role starts to become like connecting them with the experts on the cryptography side uh, or providing financial support via grants uh, or educating or, or those kinds of things. So I think the community driven development here is really important. I agree. That, that's what made uh, Web3 different. Welcome, Oren. From, from CLR.fund is quadratic funding, right? Yes. Can you please introduce yourself? And the question that we are answering right now is what is the role of the community and how you listen to them to make decisions? Right, sorry for being late, everyone. I, uh, I got double booked. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, hey, I'm Aaron from ClearFund. Uh, in terms of the role for, for the community, uh, I guess very much depends on the, the, the context or what kind of... Uh, yeah, the context. Um, in in the context of ClearFund, I think the the role of the community there is, is essentially helping to uh, allocate funds to public goods projects. So, uh, quadratic funding is this really neat mechanism where you take uh, inputs from a whole bunch of different people uh, in in the form of contributions to projects that they value, and then quadratic funding, uh, the CLR mechanism, uh, essentially spits out an allocation that uh, reflects both the preference and the strength of preference of uh, all of the individuals in the community that contributed to projects that they value. So in the context of ClearFund, I think the community's uh, biggest input is that, is, is helping to allocate funding to public goods. Great. Thank you. And Romina, Latin America, the com Latin American communities. Um, I think that we have to create our own uh, flows, our, our own uh, criteria to uh, start creating metrics and how to um, medir. Uh, to measure. To measure the, the, the impact. For example, I was talking with uh, Carlos Melgar from Honduras. He's from an island in Utila. And we are, I'm collaborating with, with the quadratic funding team the, of the Ethereum Foundation. Um, we have to, uh, the, the applicants has to pass a KYC and Carlos uh, say, uh, he, he told me two days ago, uh, hi, Crypto Chica, how are you? Uh, I applied to the quadratic funding round, but I'm a bit worried because uh, they, uh, they are asking me for my bank, uh, bank account and my address, and I don't have address. And I say, what? Uh, do you, do you, 
I, I don't understand. And he told me, yeah, because I live in, a, in an Iceland, so I don't have an, an, an account. We don't have address. If you want to go to a house of a friend, you have a reference, but you don't have a, a street or a number. And I don't have a personal account bank, and we paid our electricity and lights in a prepaid way. So it's very different of any capital or big city. They have a, a specific requirements. And we have to know, like eat LATAM, like leaders of LATAM, we have to talk a lot with our communities and with other communities to understand where is the what is the point of partida? What is the starting point? The starting point, because I think we have a lot of preconcept and some now notions, uh, como nociones, está bien. But I think that we have to check with numbers and data, hard data, strong data, and then we need to start uh, to design the, the solutions. But now we are exploring and we are trying to understand where we are. <laughs> where we are. Yeah. Sorry, because I am a bit nervous. <laughs> this is my first time talking in, in English in, in a panel. Don't worry. <laughs> Romina, if you want to know more about her, there is a, a, an, um, the New York Times article. So good. <laughs> that uh, presents the, the, the story of Romina around cryptocurrency. So I encourage you to, to read it. I, I, I listen to your, to your pitch and your projects and everything is perfect. What are the challenges that you're facing? Who wants to start? Uh, I mean, for us, we're building on really novel technology. I mean, Ethereum itself is, is a very novel technology. And then we're kind of taking that a step further, building on top of uh, zero knowledge proofs uh, using Macy, this minimal anti-collusion infrastructure. Uh, built by Privacy and Scaling Solution, a, a team funded by the uh, Ethereum Foundation. Um, and this, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's bleeding edge technology. It's, uh, it's really incredible. It basically allows us to uh, run a quadratic funding round or kind of more generally run a, uh, a vote in a way where the inputs are secret and you have no receipts. So you cannot tell how I voted. I cannot tell how you voted. And because of this quality, uh, it, it makes it much less effective to uh, attempt to collude, to bribe, to coerce people into voting or contributing uh, in a way that's different from how they would like to. Uh, but building, using this stack of novel technologies that are upgrading frequently and uh, uh, not yet audited, have not yet been tested at scale, um, uh, is a constant challenge. We, we run into uh, uh, hiccups and roadblocks and whatnot constantly. Uh, but I think that's part of the challenge. That's part of what we kind of sign up for when we're, uh, again, building on this on this stack of novel technology on novel technology on novel technology, uh, and the the reward is really worth it. Uh, you know, ultimately, what we're creating is this this system for uh, permissionless, trustless, uh, and private voting quadratic funding, uh, which is a, a really really powerful tool to uh, enable all kinds of communities from from kind of the Ethereum community to the broader Latin American community uh, and outward and onward from there. Amazing. Jacob, do you have the microphone? Yeah, that's fair. Always. <laughs> I should stop holding the mic. Um, yeah, I think on, on our end, you know, I, I think one of the biggest challenges is, you know, we haven't actually found a, a sort of ceiling for demand for our events. Like, they've been continually growing. We've been doing more and more. Um, but uh, you know, as a small team, we probably just can't service as many different regions around the world as, as we'd like to. Like Romina pointed out, like we, we hadn't done an event in LATAM until this year since 2018. Sorry for that, by the way. Um, and uh, but you know, it's not for a lack of, of caring about these markets, and and, and also um, you know, it's just literally we just don't have enough time or people to run more than six in-person events a year. It's our, they're all huge undertakings. Um, so yeah, I mean, on our end, I think uh, you know, trying to find ways to make uh, 
ETH Global more efficient as an organization, to empower other organizations, um, to uh, frankly just hire great talent internally to be able to do more and more of our mission. Um, I think those are probably some of our biggest challenges right now is just, just you know, trying to do more of what we're doing and, and to support our community um, even more. It's not only uh, difficult to find, it's so expensive right now. Sure, yeah, it's very expensive right now, yeah. <laughs> Either. Um, yeah, I could actually also double click on what Jacob kind of mentioned. Um, so at Build Guild, like I think we think a lot about developer onboarding, developer tooling and education, and we like create different content or tools to do that, but also like try to understand what is the most effective. Like sometimes, you know, we try to gather a lot of people in a Telegram group, but that's not the most effective way to communicate. So we try like different ways to approach, like to create new projects, highlight the prototypes we're building. Um, yeah, I think like those are some of the main challenges because it's like very new. We just try to experiment with different things, see what's going well and kind of continue with that. Uh, but again, we're also limited by size and uh, the technology is kind of all new. So building on new technology with small team, with everyone learning, there are like a lot of challenges which you kind of face and determine what to do next at that point. Brian. Yeah, I, I'm gonna maybe um, highlight another dimension of uh, like some of the challenges that these kinds of orgs might face. Um, so I think that in crypto and Web3 broadly, um, there's this massive iceberg of value creation across different levels of the stack, whether that be from community management uh, or from you know maintaining infrastructure, open source software, uh, research and development, that kind of thing. And only a small kind of, you know, relatively small tip of this iceberg is, cap is capable of being value capturing. Um, and so one thing that is just a difficult problem to face is the incentives problem of uh, you know, for example, if you have folks coming into the ecosystem, uh, how do you get them excited about contributing to all of that core infrastructure that um, actually, you know, kind of powers everything? Like, it's both from an incentives perspective, as well as from a fairness perspective, as well as, as from a resource allocation perspective, it's not necessarily going to be sustainable if you have people coming in and, uh, you know, there's a ton of work being done by open source developers, community managers, educators, uh, a lot of grant money coming in from nonprofit foundations to help support or instigate these new kinds of, um, you know, whether it's like product directions or whatever else it is. And uh, all that, all those resources come flowing in. And then afterwards, you know, like uh, a venture capital firm like swoops in and sort of takes kind of like all of the upside from that uh, and it goes up to all these LPs. Um, and not saying like there isn't and it, like that capital markets are not important. They're very important actually for driving specific types of progress and innovation. But then there's this big looming question around like, how do we continue to incentivize people to work on the things uh, that power this whole thing that are kind of under the surface that don't have as direct of a value capture mechanism. Uh, and that's one thing that we've been, you know, trying to think hard about. Uh, and I, I love these experiments like Protocol Guild and, you know, everything that ClearFund is doing around supporting these public goods. Um, popular, popularizing those mechanisms is just as important also as the technology that, that powers them. Uh, so I think that's a really big focus as well. And you, Romina? Um, well, at the, at, the, at the time, we, we only had two events in the past, but we, we had a lot of goals and priorities. One of, the, of our uh, priorities is education. Uh, right now, we have some companies in LATAM who, made, uh, who make customer acquisition in our communities. So we try to create communities like public goods with uh, Cooperative, cooperative, and um, for free and um, for everyone, but we don't have a um, strong alternative. So one of the goals of in the future for it Latin is to create an educational hub, and it's very important for us because here in Latin there is a lot of ghost chains and scammy chains, and we have the opportunity to um, connect with the users and the builders again. In when we experiment in the past, the DeFi summer, a lot of people knows Ethereum and knows um, NFTs, and then the uh, expensive gas fees, um, Alejo. 
push away a lot of people just because the people couldn't deploy or uh, send money or whatever in, on chain. So if we uh, create a strong, a strong uh, educational hub uh, to um, share the knowledge about layer twos and public goods, I think we have a, an historical opportunity to onboard a lot of Latin Americanos. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The education in Latin America and in developing countries is so important, as Romina mentioned. I have so many top topics to talk, but we are out of time. 